let's look at parameter and variable tooltips in Visual Studio. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created the 10 minute training series. So let's dive right into this video. Here I have a .NET 6 program inside of, it's a console app, inside of Visual Studio 2022. Really, that doesn't matter. You can use this with .NET Framework, you can use this with .NET Core, you can use this in Visual Studio 2019 as well. So this is a pretty widely available option. Now see, right now I've got a, a method. The say hello method it takes in two parameters. This is a really dumb method, but I just wanna point out how it works, okay? So it takes in two parameters, first and last name. It creates a new string that says, hello, Tim Corey, or whatever, and that's the output. But then it returns a tuple, which is both the output and the length of the output. Yes, I know I could grab the length of the output in the call when I call it, but that's not the point, okay? So we have as tuples returned here, both a string message and a length. Now, we're calling that right here. Now, because this is uh, the new version of console, this is actually a local method inside of static void main, okay? So it's a little bit different, but it still works the same way. So we have say hello, Tim Corey, and a var for result. Now, you may have seen my other videos where I have little tool tips next to Tim and Corey. So let's turn those on. If we go to tools, options, this is in the text editor section. If you go to C sharp advanced, and then down here near the bottom, notice it's, there's a lot of stuff in here. And, and quite frankly, play around in this, these areas because there's a lot of configuration that you may be missing and some really great power inside Visual Studio that's not always on by default. So if there's also things in here you can find, you're like, that annoys me, turn it off. Okay, so it's, there's some great stuff here. but Notice there is display inline parameter name hints. So let's do that. Let's check the box, hit okay. And now we have these parameter hints. It says, hey, that's the first name. And hey, that's the last name. That way, if, if this was not, you know, not on the page, so we didn't see it, we could know, oh, that Tim, that's the first name. That's Corey's the last name because I've got two first names, right? Tim and Corey. So you wouldn't know, is Corey my first name or is Tim my first name? Well, my first name is Tim. A lot of people miss that. But this at least tells you, hey, this is what the parameter name is. Now it gets even better because you go back to tools and options, you'll notice there's another section here that says display inline type hints. Let's do that. Hit okay. And now notice that in front of result, we see where we have vari4, now in parentheses, it shows up because parentheses, because it's a tuple, it says string message and int length. So it's telling us, even though we use var, it's telling us what the actual type is. So we can type var, but it will show us the actual name or type of our return values. So that can be really helpful. So let's just say, let's get rid of Line here. Let, let me just change this where I don't specify the, the name here. It goes away on, the, on this as well. So this really does track what's going on, what the, the type should be. This is helpful, not just for, you know, if you're shortcutting and saying var instead of the actual type, which is helpful, but it's also helpful in other situations like link expressions, where it's gonna tell you what the resulting value is going to be anonymous type or is it um, an actual uh, you know concrete type that we've created so some really cool stuff there if you want to enable them these do not change your code they're just visual indicators personally i don't leave this one on um, i usually leave it off so you probably haven't seen it before but notice variables inferred types lambdas implicit object creation so I don't leave that on, but I do leave these on. I do like that hint of what's the parameter name. So try that out yourself. Again, this works in Visual Studio 2022 and 2019. So either way, you probably have access to it. Give it a shot. Let me know what your thoughts are. Yes, this looks like other IDEs. Other IDEs do this. 
And really, whenever you see a great feature in one IDE, don't be surprised if it shows up somewhere else because there's only so many ideas out there and other things uh, borrow from each other. And that's okay. And that's what that's what happens. So let me know what your thoughts are. If you like this, if you don't like it, are you gonna turn it on for everything or just some things? Note that there are there is the ability to dial in exactly when you wanna see this. For literals, for new expressions, uh, when a parameter name differs only by a suffix, you can um, suppress or show these things based upon what works best for you. So again, dial this in to exactly what works best for you. All right, so that is, I'll move this, remove this here. Um, I'll give you a source code if you want, it's in the description, but um, otherwise that's how you turn on parameter hints, that's how you turn on those uh, variable hints as well. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I hope you enjoy this, I hope you um, find it valuable as well. Thanks for watching and as always, I am Tim Corey.